this. It's a marriage chance for your connection. This is my reaction to Death Mode. Ben 10 was securing that I'm really hyped up this record. I love Ben 10's cover show. I'm also looking for him to be like, Ken, like, does he even have a possibility to be doing that to a DC hero? I'm just like, Ben has a lot of aliens. Ben has a lot of fucking aliens in his, in his, in his watch. So I'm just like, what is the analysis? She feeds stuff like the other reasons, like an absolutely ridiculous feed coming in that she'll probably go between that. But otherwise, she's like, if I actually think that is chance, I'd probably be about done down. The film is some, some, some of the bizarre men, you know, you know, just in my dead, stuck in some pie as much as she can say. So, the men tell me. Don't ask me on the on the other side. Some people like it, I like it. Thank you for going. Started in three, two, one, play. <laughs> For He's with nine boomstick, and it's our job oh, to analyze really? their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who wins. Oh, they're right, it's just trying to show the aliens to show them. Sorry, I'm not to do Benjamin Tennyson was just your average ten-year-old boy. He loved video games, hated school, and was prepared to have the most boring summer vacation ever until destiny fell from the sky. Upon discovering a strange crash-landed alien device, it stuck itself upon his wrist with secrets that it hid. Now he's got superpowers and no ordinary kid in Ben 10. Just can't help myself, that theme song's so damn catchy! This strange device was the Omnitrix, a portable library of intergalactic genetic data that can transform its users into a variety of different alien species. Sounds like the perfect way to get freaky with some alien Damn, beers from all across the galaxy. Well, you do you. But the cosmic warlord Bill oh, Gax had something me. different in mind. With the Omnitrix technology, he planned to create an army of superpowered aliens and conquer the universe. Yeah, typical villain stuff. But old hentai face would have to wait, because Ben got the watch first and became a superhero. Well... Yep. Okay, first he burned down a forest, but then he got busy with the hero stuff. The Omnitrix contains a built-in radio, universal translator, distress signal, a self-defense pulse blast against anyone trying to force it on Ben's wrist, and, as a bonus, it can tell time. And whenever Ben comes across a new alien he likes to cosplay, it can scan their DNA so we can add them to his transformation collection. And he's got a ton to choose from. He's got alien forms that can control the elements like lightning, water, ice, earth, and fire with his very first transformation ever, Heat Blast, along with some just beautiful fire puns. I'm totally hot. <laughs> ah, you gotta oh respect my God, Blast. Really. As forearms, he's strong enough to create shockwaves with mere punches. As think, Accelerate, he can right, move fast enough to dodge Yuri. lightning. As Diamond Head, he can survive massive explosions like they were nothing. Actually, that's him. That's him. That's him. Brains over brawn like myself. Awesome. He can awesome. increase his intelligence with alien forms like Brainstorm. Who has an IQ of one nonillion? That's a one followed by thirty zeros, Jesus and more than three billion times greater than the highest recorded IQ in history. He can fly as jet ray, duplicate himself with ditto, and eat his feelings away as upchuck. Whereas well, that's really not a healthy way to handle issues. You know, you're right, Boomstick. Yeah, he should really just stick to alcohol. Well, and if he ever wants to suck for some reason, he's got Waka Trout, which is a fish with legs. And that's it. Probably Ben's worst transformation. And that's saying a lot considering he has an alien literally named the worst. If old timey horror movies are your thing, oh Ben can transform into every classic monster you can think of. Because I guess zombies and werewolves were aliens all along. I knew it. 
forms, Ben can manipulate the fundamental forces of the universe, like gravity, radiation, time, and energy. Feedback, for instance, once absorbed the entirety of the Big Bang, and then fired it at a robot supervillain, creating a time loop and saving the universe. Yeah, as he's got used to your work, Ben's alien started getting pretty insane. That was Mr. Triumph shook us. Mr. Triumph shook us somehow. Powerful enough to hurt a brain made of pure energy. And let's not forget my personal favorite alien, Mole Stash. He's a mole who punches people with his mustache. You can't write that. Really oh a fearsome addition to Ben's Omnitrix, what the fuck? But contrary to the show's very specific title, Ben's Omnitrix doesn't just have access to ten alien forms. Oh, In man. fact, it has one million nine. I don't like Omnitrix. He's no more than a man. Yeah, it the animation style. The I really like, like the music to sing. Well, right, let's see if I can take one of these babies for a spin. Where did you get that? Don't worry about it. You put her. Yes, that's what we're talking about. Well, the Omnitrix does have one drawback. It usually has an automatic cooldown period after, for this between transformation. After. Because overuse can permanently disfigure the user's DNA. Alright, we're going to say that four seconds earlier. Hope you want to me. I need to pee out my brain. Ugh, I'll fix this later. This cooldown would be a recurring issue for Ben until he discovered Master Control. A special code which, when input into the Omnitrix, just let him use it however he wanted. And if he's ever on death's door, the watch will automatically pop him into whatever alien body it thinks he needs at the time to survive whatever's happening. And there's one form that's almost always the best Alien answer. X. Alien X. Right, I'm Born sure. in the forge of creation beyond the multiverse itself, alien, alien X is a celestial savior, the most much. powerful species in the universe. He's basically a cosmic god who can punch planets to bits, fly faster than light, navigate himself, control minds, use telekinesis, reverse time, warp reality, and even just straight up erase people from existence. It takes a lot to get their attention, and that's why we don't want it. Why not? We could just blink, and we'd be gone. Alien X is so tough, he survived the destruction of the entire universe by the Annihilar, and didn't feel a thing. Dude, the Annihilar sounds really just, so I really just... Group. He didn't even realize total that, cosmic annihilation was happening right on top of it. Based, based on rough I estimates mean, made by a NASA like. astrophysicist, the total mass energy of the universe in joules is four. Well, that doesn't seem very impressive. Followed by 69 zeros. Oh, there it is. And to top it off, Ben as Alien oh. X went and just remade an entirely new universe identical to the old one. First of all, how the hell? Second... Since he just made a copy universe? That technically means that all those characters we watched through the whole show are still dead. Damn, dude. Oh, somebody a bone or something. However, Celestial Sapiens are composed of multiple personalities. And if they can't unanimously agree on what action to take, which can take billions of years, all that power is basically useless. But Ben convinced his extra personalities that that's a really goddamn stupid and he should have full control all the time, so it doesn't matter. Why doesn't he just go full Alien X all the time? Well, a little variety doesn't hurt, right? Plus, even without his alien forms, Ben is pretty clever and has a knack for getting himself out of trouble, even when things get really weird. And he's saved the universe more times than he can count. He's defeated Bill Gag when he had the power of a Cthulhu God, and it's a hybrid conspiracy, and whooped another celestial savior, a galactic gladiator, but when Sophie's created a galaxy-sized black hole, we can tell from the size of the black hole in relation to the galaxies in the background, as well as how long it took to create, that Alien X must have been flying approximately seven quadrillion times faster than light speed. I get it, Wiz. Alien X is totally overpowered, but Ben doesn't keep any of those powers as a human. Not much of a problem when the Omnitrix can instantly transform him fast enough to catch the Big Bang. The only thing truly holding Ben back throughout his hero career was his immaturity, being a ten-year-old and all. Oh yeah, like that one time he messed with the Omnitrix and accidentally set it to self-destruct. After charging up for a few days, it would destroy the whole universe on its own. So that's not great. Fortunately, Ben grew into a reliable and wildly successful hero by the time he reached the age of 16. He would continue his hero work into the future, eventually adopting the name Ben 10,000. The world can rest easy with Ben 10 as its first and best line of defense. Six, six and Volcanus? What are 
they doing here? About to get their alien butts kicked. That's what. Hal Jordan was just your average devilishly handsome ladies man and hotshot test pilot who discovered a crash-landed alien ship in the desert. Okay, so maybe he's got to His enormous power has led to his possession by Parallax, an entity of fear, and caused entire planets to fall. But it's been said that knowing true fear made Hal's will even stronger than before. Like when he went up against this blue dickweed Krona, who took control of all these space animal gods that embodied the different rainbow spectrum emotions. Including Ion, the green basking shark of willpower. What? I know. I... Hal was able to overturn Krona's plan, which meant overpowering the literal embodiment of all willpower in the universe with his own willpower. That sounds... Uh, impressive? Yes. Impossible? Impressible? Nice. Hal's been knocked through a plane, yeah. blasted by a supernova, and punched by the reality-shattering Superboy Prime. He was fast enough to fly to right now, a planet the, at the edge of the universe, universe how, and factoring how DC's observable universe is at least 100 trillion light-years in diameter, Hal must have been flying well I over one and a half one trillion times. times the speed of light. And without the ring, Hal once had to pilot a ship traveling over light speed manually. As in, there were planets and stars in his way, 
and Hal had to steer. And since he can match the god of willpower, he can pull off crazy will feats that other Green Lanterns have done. Like when Kyle Rayner held back a big bang. But to be fair, the power so ring is not perfect. It does carry a finite charge, and should he expend too much energy too quickly, he'll need his power battery to recover. Uh -huh. Also, if his opponent can ruin his willpower, or even just his belief in himself, Hal won't be able to use the ring, which is late. Yeah, these powers are pretty complex. Batman once had a plan to trick Kyle into thinking he was blind, and because he believed he was, the ring reacted to his thoughts and actually made him blind. But Hal's too badass to let a little sadness take him out for good. Hell, he's got the cojones to arrest God. Who is? I gotta address the yellow elephant in the room. Why the hell are Green Lanterns weak to yellow? Ages ago, yes, the Green Lanterns couldn't affect anything yellow because Parallax had messed with their power source, but that is no longer the case, so Hal isn't held back by colors. And really, that's not even the worst weakness a Green Lantern ever had. Oh yeah, way back in the day, a Green Lantern went rogue and tried to take over a planet of people with crude wooden weapons. And so as a great little F.U., the gods decided to make him weak to wood right before the blows started landing. Ah, good thing it's not a That's problem for hell. Whether it be brightest day or blackest night, I respect the I'm going to say or he'll willpower it's you to death, rain. apparently. Darkest day, blackest night. Blackest night, no need of flaws to my sights. All right, the combatants are set, and we run the data through all possibilities. Keep my sights. Face fight. Face fight. Face fight. Green lanterns, right? I'm sorry, I'm supposed to sign off. Hello, Green Lantern, best looking guardian of Sector Two Eight Fourteen. How? Yeah. I can give you ten good reasons right now to let me go. Time for more sector. Seems you're carrying a Class A Galactic Super Weapon. I'll just take this. Okay, that's interesting. You're not the first doofus to try to take this. It's hero time! I'll have to have a full jump to shoot the three and touch to last one. Before it gets heated. Too late. Wow, these guys are pretty good. Oh, actually. Actually, these are pretty good. Cool hey, have you ever seen a supernova? Several, actually. Just saw what the hell is this song? Hi, viewers. Where's the sign? Damn. I'm gonna, okay. So, you're just. Oh, he's got to lose because of because of how's the fire. No evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green Lantern's light. I don't care what kind of power. I There he goes now. You're not the first doofus to try to take this. It's hero 
Protest. Uh, step in the grooves. <laughs> oh, there it's the lab. Don't ask. I'm long on time. Gosh damn it. That's another miner on our board of death. Ben's absurd versatility and ingenuity put up a stellar fight, but Hal had the tools and skills he needed to ensure a victory. While the Omnitrix's millions of aliens is just nuts, he can only ever use one at a time, while Hal always has access to all of his powers. Even with the flexibility of master control, this meant Ben was always playing catch-up. Not a great position to be in considering Green Lantern's might. Ben's diamond head form was tough, sure, but he wasn't gosh, surviving gosh. a plane exploding in his face. I mean, Accelerate was gosh, wicked gosh, fast, but not gosh, fast gosh. enough to cross the universe in an hour. Um, and way big hour. was really strong, but he didn't get right. as hard as a supernova. Hal simply outclassed all of Ben's options, except for one. Yeah, how the hell did Hal beat Alien X? And Ben is basically omnipotent. Well, not exactly. Gosh. Celestial Sapiens are extremely powerful. But they can be beaten in battle and have failed in the past. Like the time Alien X recreated the universe. He only did that because he couldn't stop it from being destroyed in the first place. Alien X could definitely match a lot of Hal's power, but Hal had defenses against all of X's. Mind control? The ring protects yeah, Hal's head. I sure are with time, DC. Hal can do that too. Trying to You're always from from DC. Please, Green Lanterns can survive an start. entire Likewise, Alien X has never shown any defenses against the same kinds of things that Hal could replicate, like mind control, transmutation, and time manipulation. Ben and his alien forms put up That's a fight, really and Alien X is easily one of the most powerful was, combatants we've ever seen yeah. on Death Battle. Okay, so However, so Hal had the speed, versatility, awesome. and literal willpower necessary to claim his victory. Guess you could say Hal was definitely the ringer for this fight. <sighs> Oh, Wiz, don't be green with envy. That pun was 10 out of Ben. The winner is Green Lantern. Yeah, that makes sense. I sure went with... Hi, Sam. He's Luis. Neither of us are Wizard Moonsick, but don't go anywhere just yet because we're about to announce the next matchup. Let's and if you love this. metal music, you can click the download link below. What's this? Oh, shit. Rice, yes. I'm another movie character. Oh, is she a Persona character? Is she a, is she a Persona character? Okay, like, you know, I usually don't do this. Maybe Pixie with a cow thing. Like, I kind of like the Persona character. Is that character from the cow?
That's for all my luck. I gotta see. Just go over to know you have it. I was looking for Bantamite. But it makes perfect sense why Bantamite is. Like 100%. It makes total sense how Bantamite is. <coughs> That's easy. It's so popular. I'm not sure what to do. So, time travel is only another. DC universes. One well, time time really since it's like all I have. That's what I'm pretty hyped for. I'm forcing that out. It's in Super Star Story. I haven't played it. But, Charlotte from Sonya is a Super Star Story or something. I haven't, I haven't played it. I'm so saying that it's a bullshit. But I'm gonna put them couple of ice is gonna win, but you know. Them heels them people talk to me saying like they think they feel they feel these characters. Why? It's only like they feel with these characters. It's just like they're saying they feel these characters. No, they they don't feel them enough. DC. That's just what their research indicates. And they could, like, you know, that's, this is a family thing. They use facts to back their opinions up, but it's the yeah, other opinions. So, you know, if you disagree, they just disagree. They'll say they, 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 they um, are scared of the franchise. It's fucking stupid. I love this. I can't wait for more. That's the video, I just want to thank all my current subscribers and, and anyone who supports me on Patreon. And I hope you enjoyed the, hope you enjoyed, enjoyed the video. You can find the mystery on Twitter, and you can find and support me on, page, on Patreon. And also, if you liked the video, please leave a comment. I always appreciate it, don't talk like that. And finally, also, you can find the links to the on Patreon in the description below. Finally, your favorite anime reviewer, Jessica Rokaku, and current video game creator. Sayonara, bye bye.